welcome to Theo Trade. This is Don Kaufman here on a Saturday morning, May 30th, 2020. Doing the weekend update. Let's get right down to business. Markets are set up with a phenomenal risk reward. And I'm going to detail that specifically here in just a few moments. But first, let's look okay, a little bit at this previous week of trade. More importantly, Let's move forward and discuss uh, what we're very likely to see here in the near term. I think the first point that I want to make in this weekend's update is just we're ripping to the upside, but it's on a wing and a prayer, right? And I'm saying that and you're like, well, that's not fair. Come on, Don. We've been up week in and week out. You know, one of the ways to really uh, kind of discuss this maybe isn't necessarily to look at the SPX, but to, uh, to talk about the spiders. So the spiders again, have been trapped, uh, trapped in this uh, volatility box, which again, we're going to talk about the volatility box because the volatility box pop goes the volatility box to the upside, right? And and really the volatility box broke this week. It was a shortened trading week of four days. We, we broke to the upside. But as you look at this marketplace, progress to the upside. I mean, come on, all the news that's coming out. You have to start to question though, is it a short squeeze or is it real buyers? And I may be able to answer a little bit of that for you. Um, you know, there's a very large number of, uh, of market participants right now that are just downright bearish. And when you're downright bearish, you get a ton of, of shorts out there. And when those shorts okay, cave in, which they do, right? As the markets rally up, the shorts are losing money. When you're losing money, what do you do? You cover when you cover as a short, right? And, and again, I, I'm just explaining this for those of you maybe that are a little bit newer to this, but shorting, okay? You are selling to what? To open. You know, you get short over here and we start to rally up and you, what well, you have to cover? And cover is doing what? Is buying. And when you buy, more people have to buy and we just buy and we buy and we buy and we start to squeeze to the upside, you get a little bit of a short squeeze. So you're looking at this and I call this, we're ripping to the upside and a wing and a prayer. Is there a short squeeze of real buyers? Here, you want to see something interesting? I found this interesting. Maybe you, uh, you will too. What you're looking at here is, um, this is actually just ETFs, just ETFs, but I want to isolate. It's uh, top 10 redemptions of this past week. Okay. Spiders happens to be actually number one. By the way, these are redemptions. You want to know what that means? <laughs> That's over $2.6 billion coming out of the spiders. And then there's a couple other, you know, large capital growth, which is very similar to uh, to the spiders. Large capital growth, very similar to the spiders. This is the QQQ. How ironic the QQQ sees that kind of outflow. And it goes on from there. You know, IWM also seeing some outflows, but flying to the upside, XLU. So you ask yourself, like, wait a second. These are redemptions, okay? These are people taking money out of these, these ETFs. How could we possibly be driven to the upside? Well, okay, that is, uh, that's why we believe, okay, in very large part. That's why I'm calling it. We're trading on a wing and a prayer over here. And it's uh, it's dangerous. I mean, there's not too many times where you see outflows like that with the marketplace grinding higher. Now, that doesn't necessarily, and I want to clear, uh, just clarify something here. Just because we're seeing outflows on major ETFs, like the spiders. It doesn't necessarily dictate that the spiders have to tank. It doesn't because those outflows very quickly, you know, in all of this short covering in here can actually turn into real buying. And all of a sudden then we spurt, okay, to, you know, to all time highs. And that can be happening. But as of right now, like if you're, if you're kind of curious, yeah, that is, it's a lot of shorts kind of, uh, kind of covering. And that's where I really wanted to start this, uh, this weekend's update is that uh, we're having a proverbial pukage to the upside as people kind of throw in the towel on a lot of those shorts. All right. Once again, in, uh, in the last, you know, umpteen weeks over here, we have been talking about a volatility box. And again, a volatility box is when you get trapped, okay, in an extraordinarily, tight range, even in the midst of volatility, you're trapped in here. And uh, again, we're trapped in this volatility box and this week pop. Okay. We believe that this is uh, at, at least a definitive break to the upside of the, uh, of the volatility box. That's why I say pop goes the volatility box. So we're out of it. We're out of it. We're out of the contest. But before I go any further, okay, so we pop to the upside, but there's a lot of other products that we've been looking at that have also been trapped in a volatility box. By the way, here's the bonds, but the bonds went through a contract rollover. So if the contract rollover happens, you have to come over here to futures, you go to adjust for contract rolls, hit apply, hit okay. One of the first things I want to show you is that yes, the S and P's, it looks like crack the vol box, but the bonds 
have done nothing of the kind. What other products have we looked at recently? We looked at gold, okay? Uh, and gold, gold was in a volatility box, still in there, okay? It's still in there. What else did we look at that was in a volatility box? We looked at the dollar, okay? So again, I could spend all day talking about the, you know, the risks in here. And by the way, speaking of the dollar, okay? The dollar, I'll give you this, it is right Okay, right towards the lower cusp of that volatility box, but it actually retracted back up into it. So at this point, okay, at this point in time, yes, the S&Ps are outside of what we okay, are quantifying as definitive volatility box, but um, we're a hop, skip, and a jump away from being right back down into it. Uh, and in fact, for those of you that have tuned in uh, quite a bit in some of the recent videos, and I've talked about this like incessantly, I... I'm still carrying, and, and I'll describe my positions here in a moment. I'm still carrying negative delta. I am one of those shorts, but I'm not in here covering, okay? I'm not in here like puking out my guts because we're rallying to the upside. But a very large part of me believes that we actually have to go up to be able to eventually come back down, that those shorts have to cave. Uh, everybody has to actually believe it's going to be a sustained rally. I mean, it's tough, okay? It's tough right now. All the negative news out there, I mean, it, it couldn't possibly be more negative than what you're seeing in this this last weekend you turn on any any tv channel not even the news and it's it's negativity and yet you're seeing the marketplace of course uh, exploding to the upside that's why i say we're ripping to the upside and the wing and a prayer we're seeing outflows of etfs over here but none of it matters none of it matters because if you cover your shorts if you cover your shorts inside of the s p futures i'm sorry you drive the marketplace higher it doesn't matter whether it's people putting new money to work or shorts, you know, throwing the towel. You're still grinding a little bit, uh, a little bit higher. So, uh, although we have actually cracked outside of that volatility box, I am very suspect at this point because the other products have it, because the bonds are still trapped, because gold is still trapped, because the dollar is still trapped. Okay, they're all like just tightly wound. So even though we've actually popped to the upside, I'm telling you, okay, there's still a lot of volatility in Demdare Hills, and you better know that. Which um. It brings me right to my next point. Who says volatility cannot be to the upside? You know, one of the things you have to have respect for in any marketplace, okay, is that the uh, the volatility is still extraordinarily high. High compared to what? You know, like, oh, man, it's only a 27 VIX. You know, a year ago, okay, I was, you know, you, you go to sleep at night and, you know, what, what do you ask for? I'm like, I just, I just please give me more volatility. That was a year ago. Now, okay, we got more volatility. And, and I, you know, I've warned of this on some of the recent videos. And again, I'm going to warn you again, you don't fall asleep in this marketplace. Okay. Listen, this is the last 10 years, but let's, let's get a little crazy. Let's pull up the maximum volatility chart that we absolutely can. This is just the, the max volatility chart. In fact, the VIX, the VIX is actually calculated going back even before that. But the point I want to make, and I'm just going to zoom in, I'll zoom into basically 1997 till right now. And the point that I want to make with this, okay, markets, are really, really good at lulling you to sleep. Okay, one of the one of the things that I want to point out, this is where we're currently at with volatility. All right, look back at some of the uh, the previous volatility events. I mean, listen, uh, these are some big volatility events that are going on over here. A couple of spikes here and there. Okay, obviously this is the financial crisis. You know, right in this time frame over here, you realize that volatility right now is elevated to the point like the only thing to compare it to in terms of sustainability of this kind of risk would be the financial crisis. There's nothing else really on the screen. Sure, back here in the internet bubble, but the internet bubble, the internet bubble was like, we were high, we were low. We were so low that we got high, and we got low, and then we got high again, and we've been dead for the last couple of years. The point that I'm making simply with the VIX, you don't get off your game right now, okay? Just because we got a little volatility to the upside, you know, don't, don't, when I say this, don't, don't get off your game, okay? If you're sitting here watching this in disbelief, you're like, we just can't keep going up. Yeah, well, we got some volatility to the upside. That's what short covering can do. That's just, you know, it's part of the program over here. When I say, though, you know, don't get off your game, there's a lot of people that are throwing in the towel in the shorts, and they're actually getting long out there. And I'm telling you, okay, this is still an extraordinarily, okay, chaotic and dangerous marketplace. Now, we'll come back to some more volatility discussion here momentarily. Next thing I want to talk about, bonds up, marketplace up. We have a, uh, we have a, a bit of a uh, conundrum on our hands. You know, yesterday in, uh, in trade, okay, the bonds, they rallied. They rallied and they rallied, though, with the marketplace also rallying, which is, again, very unusual to say the least, but it's incredibly unusual 
in the last couple of months of trade. Um, but as the bonds rallied, and I would keep very close eye on this, and the reason of me discussing this wasn't to talk about the bonds rallying. It's because the XLF is actually faltering, okay? I keep very close eyes on the financials. Now, I'm going to come back to the financials a little bit later when we start to talk about, you know, rotations and so forth, but I'd keep very close eye on the financials. We need them, all right? If the marketplace is going to sustain these levels or go higher, you are absolutely unequivocally going to need the financials, okay, as part of that. The financials are nothing less, okay, than downright wicked volatility at this point, okay? And, and and when I'm talking about volatility, you know, everybody thinks like, all right, he's looking over here. Like, I am looking over here. Like, look at the volatility inside of the financials. You know, you have to have respect. This is the XLF. It's the entire financial sector. They're basically running about a 40% implied volatility. 40% implied volatility. You're like, okay, man, who cares? Okay, bring up something like Apple. Okay, why not? Apple has 30% implied volatility. You mean to tell me that the financials, Okay, as a whole, the entire sector are actually more risky than Apple. Yep, that's what the marketplace is saying right now. You mean the financials as a whole, okay, are more risky than some piece of crap called Facebook? Yes, that's exactly what we're saying right now. Sorry, I had to poke a little fun there at Facebook. You know, if something happened to uh, to like Zuckerberg, obviously Facebook could fall flat on its face. But the marketplace right now is literally giving more risk to the financials. You better respect them because they can move the entire marketplace, right? And and again, this is the kind of stuff where on these weekend updates, people are like, are we going up or are we going down? Yeah, right now we're Mr. Toad's wild ride. But I'm telling you, okay, you want to know up or going up or down? You better watch these financials in the days to come. Because the financials, not only are they wicked volatile, okay, they're actually cracking through again and again and again these expected moves. I mean, it is just insane the number of breaches of expected move. The marketplace is all kinds of screwed up right now, and it doesn't seem to be able to get its bearings. But those financials, Better watch them like a hawk in the days to come. And the reason I'm so adamant about the financials, you know, the financials were also in an incredibly tight volatility box. In my belief, they actually broke it here. Then they broke it to the upside here. They look like they're about to come off hard and fast. If those financials come off, it will undermine the S&Ps. I can't tell you definitively if the financials are going to come off, but I can tell you, okay, they're going to actually be the driver of the S&Ps. And, uh, you know, in large part, in large part, the monsters of technology, okay, the monsters of technology have been big, big players, right? But the monsters of technology right now in just the last couple of, uh, of trading sessions and really specifically the last two weeks, they faltered a little bit. And because the monsters of tech, which are, and again, if you're new to this, monsters of tech are Microsoft and Apple and Facebook and Amazon and Google, because they faltered a little bit, they've actually, uh, the, the lead, the charge, is has been the uh, the financials so the bonds were up and the reason of me mentioning the bonds are up is to tell you that the financials then got whacked a little bit uh and that was like the odd sector kind of out okay by the way interesting uh, interesting day yesterday news came out like in the last half hour of trade uh, last hour of trade things got kind of wild take a look at this you have the s p's up you have the bonds up you have golds up uh, you know got oil up dogs and cats living together and uh, it's just that's pretty crazy. But the advanced decline line then yesterday, and I can actually dig into the advanced decline line. You'll find this also rather amusing. The advanced decline line ended yesterday a pure 50-50. So even though we're looking at this marketplace, we're like, oh, yeah, it's a rip and rally. Okay. The rip and rally here isn't consistent with what you're seeing in the marketplace. The marketplace is being undermined by something. The S&P 100 had a 50-50 advanced decline line. The bonds were up. Financials were down. You're getting outflows from your major funds, like put the pieces of the puzzle together. I'm getting some place. Next, VVIX, the volatility of the volatility index. I don't know about you, but I'm actually kind of relieved. The VVIX has been above the 110 level, higher than the 110 level, uh, for a longer period of time than any other point in history. Okay, well, the VVIX hasn't been tracked that long, but neither here nor there. I'm actually relieved. I'm relieved that it's under 110. I'm going to tell you why. Because <clears throat> this means the professionals are not buying up as much volatility as they were just a few weeks ago kind of means like maybe risk is subsiding over here i like this and i'll tell you why i like it because I, I look at this a little bit of a, a contrarian and i look at it and say ah they're they're laying down their weapons which means this is the time we could get attacked <laughs> so uh the vvix keep an eye on it for the threshold of 110 because if the vvix actually shows 
uh, or displays any bit of a bid in here, I'd be, again, very nervous about the marketplace as a whole. So the VVIX comes back down. That's the volatility of the volatility index. All right, <clears throat> next point to be able to make, and again, I was already hitting upon this, but I'm going to further it, and I wanted to give special love to the monsters of tech. So here's my special love to the monsters of tech, okay? The monsters of tech are actually weak relative to the NASDAQ in yesterday's trade. Let me highlight it for you. Again, the monsters of tech is a conglomerate symbol versus the NASDAQ. The NASDAQ up 1.34%, the Monsters of Tech only up 0.8%. So once again, what's really been run on the roost lately is big tech, which is Monsters of Tech, and financials. Both of them are incredibly weak, okay, relative to the NASDAQ. I think it's critical to see that because what drove the marketplace higher again, is starting to have, well, display a little bit of weakness and starting to get undermined out there. Moving on, SPX expected move. So as we cruise over to the SPX, the mother of all products, you cruise over to the SPX on a week to week basis, we look at the expected move. Now in this past week of trade, and again, I, I love to detail this stuff. And uh, when I say the past week of trade, last week, we were expecting a $71 move. Ah, let's just round it. 72 bucks. So you're looking at the $72 move. Actual move bigger. So if you look at these three lines, this is actually where we start the week. This is the upper bound. So from here to here is roughly, that's the $72 move, right? From here to here is basically a $72 move. So we breached it. But how much did we breach it by? Well, if I go to an intraday chart, this is an intraday chart. Okay. Here is the breach. We were supposed to basically land at uh, roughly 30, what, 27. Instead, we landed up at 44. It's a breach. It is not a big breach, but count it, count it. It's, it's absolutely a breach. So we're going from a period. And again, this is, this is one of the more critical points I want to make. We're going from a period in this volatility box. Where we're displaying incredible degrees of efficiency in the marketplace. And all of a sudden we're actually flipping back over. We might start getting inefficient again. All right. This next week of trade is critical. It's critical because if we break through the expected move again, then you know it's going to be Mr. Toad's wild ride from that point out. We're looking at a $78 expected move in this next week of trade. Uh, and again, I wouldn't be surprised at all to see some continuation of some volatility. Things get downright nutty. The next thing I wanted to mention on here is sector rotations. They continue. Okay. To me, this is just, and again, I've been hammering this already, right? You know, the financials, we're rotating from tech to financials to energy to consumer staples. Uh, to me, it's just a wild game of musical chairs. Okay. And it is. I mean, and, and we all realize how musical chairs ends, right? The music on, the music on, the music on. All of a sudden, they turn the music off. Everybody dives for a chair, except if you have, uh, you know, 10 people playing, you only have, what, nine chairs or even eight chairs. Um, as I was saying a little bit earlier, you know, oh, you don't get to, you don't go to sleep when the volatility is like this. And when you see volatility to the upside, you see the game of musical chairs. When I talk about musical chairs, again, I'm not trying to be facetious. I'm just saying the whole marketplace is a wild rotation. We're coming out of technology, then we're going into monsters of tech. And if we're not going there, okay, the energy sector, which is actually weak yesterday, energy, and I've been talking about this incessantly, energy, okay, right there has actually been aligning with uh, financials in terms of a sector rotation. And then, and then to bring in a little bit more complexity, we start to look at stuff like XLP, which has also been rotated in and out, uh, quite, uh, quite substantially. But the, uh, the big ones, the big ones I would focus on are tech financials, energy, uh, technology is up financials and energy are down and vice versa. So when I say the music stops, okay, if you come in here in a trading session, and these three categories are down, you better be nervous at that point. If all three of those are down, that means these sector rotations have actually, uh, they've stopped and uh, the sell side activity has commenced, okay? It's also, it's been rare to see all three of those actually up by the end of the day. Again, a lot of sector rotations going on. Now, last but not least, oh my Lulu hurts, okay? For those of you that have not followed uh, us for uh, any period of time, uh, that sounded like uh, one hell of a weird statement, but uh, Lulu does hurt. So I've actually taken an, on a short position inside of Lululemon, and it is ripping, okay? And there's just no question in my mind, this is a short squeeze over here. But uh, yes, I am I'm getting beaten up at a Lulu position. And by the way, I like to talk about, you know, people obviously uh, from time to time, they hide. They hide their losing positions. No, man, no, never. 
because you got you got to bear that thing out in front of everybody. Okay, I'm getting hammered at Lulu, but Lulu it exemplifies everything that this marketplace is about, and that is the risk reward is beautiful. It's beautiful in here, but you got to be able to sustain the position. And I'm not talking just about Lulu. I'm talking about a ton of different products. I'm telling you the market is set up with a phenomenal risk reward. Okay, just because, you know, I have to tell you in the Lulu position, if there's one thing I will tell you about the Lulu position, this, okay, this is my sacrificial lamb. Everybody realizes if they trade enough, you end up in a position you're like, holy crap, that position is killing me. Well, I'm now calling Lulu. I don't know if I'm ever going to make money in here. I don't know. I'm short like back in this neighborhood over here. I am. I'm short like the 220, 230-ish kind of range. Added a little bit more 240. So I'd say my average in here is probably I'm short about uh, 230. But I'm actually short in defined risk, okay, because I am using it in the money put. We explode to through, uh, to 300. So, you know, what am I? You know, if you're going to be wrong, okay, do it big. You know, go big or go home. If you're going to be wrong, be wrong by the tune of $70. Go big or go home, baby. So we explode to the upside. And as I said, it's kind of my sacrificial lamb trade. I've had rough positions on before, but this one, you know, it's right up there. Okay, maybe it comes back down. Maybe it doesn't. I'm actually going to continue to sustain the Lulu. But again, the Lulu exemplifies everything I'm looking for. It's phenomenal risk reward. And I say that again, what, what do I mean? Look at stuff like Home Depot. Okay, come on. I want to pull this up on a year-to-date percentage. Home Depot is actually up 13%, 13%, okay? Of course, everybody's going to jump out of the woodwork and shoot me emails and be like, you're wrong, man, okay? People are fixing their houses. I didn't ask for your fundamental perspective because I just don't care. This isn't about fundamentals. It's about the simple fact, okay? Here's the fact. If the entire marketplace were to sell off any time in the next couple of months, I don't want to hear about fundamentals in Home Depot. If the entire marketplace is going to sell off in the next couple of months, what you think they're not going to hit Home Depot? They're going to hit them all. It's called the S&P 500, okay? And guess what? It has really high correlations when the marketplace gets hit. I look at something like Home Depot, okay? And it's like, I salivate. And when I talk about risk reward, all I'm saying in the most, in the easiest context, you know, and you could tune into the Theo Trade chat room and I'll, I'll talk about this in much more detail, but listen, look at the upside potential. It is mitigated now. Downside risk is freaking phenomenal. It just doesn't get much better than this. And this is where, oh yeah, I'm building a short position. I'm building a short position, okay, pretty much to the cows come home, not just in Home Depot. I can go through underlying after underlying after underlying. Look at some of the, the tech stocks here, up 14%, okay? The apples, okay? And you're like, it's dangerous to short Apple. Yeah, it's dangerous to short Apple. I've actually avoided tech until now, okay? Because I think the risk rewards, again, they are phenomenal. And I think, you know, Lululemon might exemplify that. And, you know, if somebody would ask me right now, Don, would you still short Lulu? Of course, I'm still in the short position. So, you know, if I were short back here, I'd love to be short up here. And I am going to sustain my position inside of Lulu. But I think Lululemon, it just it exemplifies like the risk reward in the entire marketplace. You're like, look at Lulu. OK, that's ridiculous. This is a five year weekly. All right. They're like we must buy yoga pants. And again, I'm, I'm poking fun at this because everybody comes up with a fundamental reason. They're going to be like, no, man, people are staying home. They're not wearing suits anymore, man. They're wearing yoga pants. I'm like, listen, I don't give a crap about your yoga pants. It has nothing to do with that and everything to do with the fact that if we go down on the S&P 500 in the next couple of months, okay, they're coming for you, Lulu. They're coming for you, Home Depot. And they're definitely coming for Microsoft because Microsoft happens to be the biggest market cap out there. Markets sell off. There is no place to hide. All you can do is you can find the best risk reward possible. I'm telling you, this marketplace is set up, okay, for a phenomenal bearish risk reward if you find the right underlyings. Thanks, everybody, for joining us here for the weekend update at Theo Trade. Ah, join us all throughout the course of the week in the Theo Trade chat room. Have a great weekend, everybody. Bye-bye.